How often do cops make mistakes? I would say often they're people, but their mistakes can um, affect a lot of people and affect people in a uh, greater way. So I think their mistakes have to be um, be very careful. Uh huh. Okay. Ready. Okay. So they can make mistakes often, but the problem is when when they make some mistake, they can really impact somebody. It may be just sending someone to jail for shoplifting for you know trying to put food on the table and like you don't see that and you don't want to see that and you're just like come on man come on it could be that and somebody could say well that's not a mistake it's against the law and somebody else would say come on so it could be something like that or it could be what happened with Tyree Nichols how about the two of you like how often do police make mistakes I think there's like little mistakes throughout their day that they might make even when it comes to like pulling someone over, do I pull this person over or not? And they might not pull them over or they maybe should have. Or there's little mistakes with putting someone's name in or like charting something down. But the big mistakes are a the lot terrible more serious. Ones. Yeah, the big terrible mistakes are more serious and detrimental. How, and how often are police officers making really serious, terrible mistakes? I gotta think a second. You don't, you don't have to answer that, actually, because that's a question that none of us know. It's hard. Like, it's hard to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't, and you don't have an answer to that. The truth is, right? I mean, you're going to try to answer it here, but I love how your instinct was to not answer that, because you don't know. No, no, I don't know. Nobody knows. I, we could put a hundred cops up here and ask them that question, and they don't know. When, when I, you know, when I'm working with the police, I, I have sources, I have data that I'll run past police, basic data about policing and arrests and so on, and they don't know the data. And I'm like, how do you, and I remember with this one group of cops, I'm like, how do you not know this? You're police officers. How do you not know this basic bit of information that actually would be beneficial for you to know? But they're like, yeah, I don't know, we just don't know it, right? And I'm like, okay, well, nobody knows in some ways. It makes like a big, grievous, egregious mistake. Bro, let me just ask you, how often do cops do really terrible and unethical things? Um, I think that, I mean, mistakes obviously are made, and when they are so egregious that they garner, like, national attention and we see it in the media, that's definitely something that it happens. But I think when you take into account the, put it in perspective of how often people are interacting with the police and how many of those situations could go wrong and don't go wrong that people don't necessarily get to see, it makes it not necessarily better, but it puts a little bit more in perspective. Okay, can you say something about how often people are interacting with the police? Or can any of you say that? What do you mean by that? Just like day-to-day -day interactions that people do have the, with the police, it's such a high number, and the number compared to that number of things that go wrong and when people do make mistakes, that's really the piece that we see. No one gets to see the day-to-day Okay. Interactions really. Okay. So 65 million in police encounters, right? Yeah. And 10 million arrests. Right. That's a lot of encounters, y'all, right? That's a, so when you think about what makes the front, the front, the headlines of the news, right? And we think when things go really bad, it makes the headlines. And you think there's 65 million police encounters in the United States. It's contacts. It's called context in the world. The FBI calculates it as context. 10, 10 million arrests. That's a lot of context. That's a lot of arrests. And so when I want to make a statement about police, right, policing, and I want to say, oh, how often it goes bad? How often police are acting like in, in bad ways and good ways? Well, I have to look at it in terms of these numbers. By the way, there are certain neighborhoods where people are much more likely to have police encounters. Let's go back to what I said about race and racism and unequal treatment. There's a disproportionate number of these contacts and encounters that are had by black people and brown people. Okay. And the encounters that go bad are disproportionately experienced by black people and brown people. That's a given. The question is, how much more? Disproportionate doesn't mean two times or three times or five times as much down here. It just means 
it's disproportionate. So now what does that mean? And in some neighborhoods, it's really disproportionate. In some communities where the police are really going after black people and brown people. In other neighborhoods, less so. But there aren't many neighborhoods where it's a mix of people where police are much more likely to go after white people. And if you can imagine a story in which, if we go to Tyree Nichols, where a middle class or upper middle class white guy, any of you, most, which would be most of you in here, would be 300 feet from your home, get pulled over by the police, the police just giving you from the get-go contradictory statements and yelling at you and get out of your car, don't get out of your car, put your hands on the steering wheel, let me see your hands, like put your hands down, like one thing after another, screaming at you and swearing at you and you're sitting in the car trying to go, trying to decide, first off, I don't even know that these are police, so they could be anybody here to rob me or take, or, or take my car, anything. The cops are just being just complete badass assholes. And, like, and, so, and then eventually, you know, he's like, what did I do? And they rip him out of the car and they put him on the ground. And if you can imagine how often that happens to upper middle class white kids in an upper middle class white neighborhood, 300 feet from your home, and all the cops are black. Has that ever happened? Has that ever happened in the United States? Where a bunch of black cops pulled an upper middle class white kid out of his car in an upper middle class neighborhood, the neighborhood in which he lives. Has it ever happened? Would it ever happen? And I'm like, I don't know. I doubt it. And then it makes me wonder, okay, well, what happened with him is extreme in that he was killed. But how often does that kind of actions on the part of the police occur with black people? And what I want to say to white people is, you have no idea. If you're not studying this, you have no idea because you cannot base this on your own experience. Just like I can't base policing in the United States based on how policing happens in my neighborhood a mile from campus. 